Hello. I'd like to make some comments on your observations of the articles that you picked from my Twitter feed. One comment, somebody commented on the article about reading, reading news regularly. And I assume you as working adults do that. But my aha moment here on campus with face-to-face -face students, the fact is most don't. And that is a concern of mine because reading the news, be it on politico.com, cnn.com, or the myriad number of newspapers online, or the, or the plain old fashioned paper newspaper, is a way to stay informed not only about your business, but more importantly about U.S. and world events. We don't live on an island anymore. We are a global society. And what happens in one part of the world does impact the U.S., just as what happens in the U.S. impacts others. So I'm glad you're reading, as I am. Several of you commented on the importance of agreeing with the company culture. And someone commented that they would work for a company in which they felt comfortable for in their in their culture at a lower salary. I too have left one job because I just didn't agree with the corporate culture. If you are miserable in your job, it'll eventually show. Interestingly enough, there isn't really an agreed upon definition of what corporate culture is as someone pointed out. I think it's a combination of the vision and mission and how people roll that out, lead that, and live that, as well as the personalities of the people around you. Because after all, the organization is nothing more than a collection of people organized around job functions. Several pick the article about working or not working on Thanksgiving. Uh, my job in Shell, because I was global, we were the only country that celebrated Thanksgiving. And more often than not, I was online checking my email on our American holidays. And vice versa, my colleagues in the UK and in the Netherlands were also checking their holiday email, because that's the only way you can kind of roll to the center of each culture. Someone commented on, well, several of y'all commented on the way the businesses are communicating that they will be open. They're using the tools of mass communication. And it's really an example of the nexus, the crossover, between communication and marketing, letting people know their stores are open and you can go and shop. Monster.com in the attempt to rebrand itself. I found my job in Shell on Monster.com and later after I was hired, the hiring manager said he wouldn't do it again because he had over 500 applications and most of them were unqualified for the job, but he had to take time to at least look to see that they were unqualified. And I think that that's the main reason. The number of applications people uh, receive, the main reason why you never hear from a business uh, if you were not a job candidate. There's simply too many out there to have to do the automated reply to. The French and the restaurant's doggy bag debate. I put that up there just as a cultural difference between how different cultures treat one item, doggy bags. And in France and in Germany, you can bring your doggy into the restaurant and they can sit under your table with a bowl of water. So there's a cultural difference right there. Someone uh, pointed out uh, a Hayes newspaper article about President Hammond. 
while he was in China, and he goes every year because we have a very large 3,000 student population program in China, that they here in our local politics quoted him as kind of endorsing a political candidate, which was just simply made up. And uh, he posted a reply, and even on his own Facebook page, he was letting people know that his name had been misused. Well, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed how I use Twitter as a way to um, curate articles in a large collection that you can select from that an article that would meet your individual needs. Thank you. It was very interesting re reading.